Hi, I'm Aaron Heiser, Makers of Leather Supply, and this is episode four of our bag making series. Um, and this episode will just be about something that scares the living crap out of a lot of leather workers, and it is zippers. Um, I, uh, I still am a little intimidated by zippers, but I've figured out most applications of them. Um, and so I want to talk a little bit about them and maybe, uh, the familiarity will make some folks a little more easy around them. Um, we have a couple of different kinds of zippers here to show you. Um, and ultimately at the, toward the, the end of the video here, we will put together the, the zipper we need for our, our bag project that we're making here. So, um, sorry to get all up close and personal, but here we are talking about tiny, tiny little pieces. So... All right, um, there's a couple of different uh, actual types of zippers as far as what they're even made out of. Um, the anatomy of a zipper, that brass part right there is called the teeth. The, the fabric part is called the tape. Um, the zippers I carry are all uh, number five. Um, I like those because they're nice and big and bold and they, uh, they have a really wide tape. So, um, when you're sewing them to your leather, there's a little bit of room for error there. Um, I, uh, we just got in a whole bunch of, this is called zipper by the foot right here. Notice it's just a strip. I mean, you can cut off as much as you want and then, um, put your components on it and make whatever kind of zipper you're needing for your particular project. We just got in a huge box full of zipper components so that we could sell zipper by the foot here. Um, because as we progress through our bag making series, you're going to have a hard time finding bag, uh, zippers that just fit whatever you're trying to make. Or perhaps you want to do something a little bit more special than, uh, than a ready-made zipper. Um, case in point, the bag we're in the middle of, the, the overnight bag. Um, when I built the demo model, I got lazy and I had a prefabricated zipper already on hand and I grabbed it up and I put it on the bag and I've been cursing myself ever since. Um, so what I mean by that is it's the proper length, it's the right color, it's exactly what I wanted except for one point. This bag really deserves two zipper heads that close together in the middle. All right, in case, you're, in case I'm not uh, saying that right, I will show you this bag has that. So this one, I actually built my own zipper, but here it is, there's half of it, there's the other half of it. And what it really helps with, besides of course, you know, each of them only have to go halfway, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, it helps to have them to pull against each other. You know, the other bag, it's almost like you have to have a little tab or a handle on the end to pull against because um, the bag doesn't, you know, the zipper doesn't want to move. The bag just wants to collapse or whatever. Um, so, yeah, if you have two zippers like this, though, then you have them to pull against each other, which, okay, that's not going to work in this case. Um, but anyway, uh, I hope I've made my point without actually being able to prove it there. Uh, so, yeah. Um, that, and it's just, it's nice. It's more, a little bit more custom, a little bit more fancy. And, um, yeah. So here we will talk about how to build such a zipper. Oh, um, well, I wanted to talk about some other things. I'm sorry. Um, talking about zipper, uh, anatomies and all that. This one is a brass tooth zipper. I really like these because I use a lot of brass hardware, so it matches. Um, here is another one. This one is a black tape uh, with also brass teeth on it. All right. And then we get into the, uh, these are uh, a newer style of zipper. They're called nylon. Um, so the teeth are that, that plasticky material. Um, they're, they're still great zippers. I'm not trying to say that in a negative way or anything, but to me, this is more of a dressy type zipper than a, a nice rugged, like, let's make a cool bag zipper. Um, I haven't used too many of these just because I don't, again, I don't really like the look as much as I like the look of the, the, the brass ones. Um, that being said, they do zip a little easier than the brass ones do. So there's a benefit there. Um, like we, uh, we work her, we were selling the, or well, we still are, but the pre-made zippers that are seven or nine inches long that are called dress zippers. 
they're small versions of the nylon zipper for interiors of wallets and things like that. And in a, an application like that, that this zipper is more than fine. Um, but again, for these big rugged bags that we're trying to make, I, uh, I, I like the brass um, teeth. They're more rugged and uh, I don't know if they're necessarily more durable, but they sure look it. So let's talk about the other couple of parts of a zipper here. Um, I've got a little baggie somewhere that I should have grabbed as usual. All right, so you've got the zipper uh, tape part and the zipper tracks there, the, the teeth. What you also have is your zipper pull, and there's also a billion different kinds of these things, all right? But this is the thing that you actually pull to close your zipper. Um, when I'm choosing one for a bag, I like one with a big eyelet on it. Um, hard to see. Put it up against the dark color here. I like one with a big eyelet because then, um, you know, I can put a little piece of leather in there and tie a bleed knot or something. It, it makes it a little nicer and a little easier for the user, too. Um, so that's the, the ones I, I carry. I try to get the ones with the, the larger eyelet on them. Other than that, there are locking zippers. Um, this is not a locking zipper, but they have like a little latch that when you pull on the handle, it unlocks the zipper from the track, the, uh, the teeth, and allows it to move. Um, kind of a safety feature, I guess. Uh, I don't really worry about them for any of our application or the applications I use them for, but it is a nice feature. Uh, blue jeans have locking zippers on them. That's why you can't just, you know, yank the dang thing, uh, without, um, holding the, the tab. Um, then there's some that this thing's double-sided, so it like rotates over onto the inside and all kinds of craziness, but a bunch of different ones of these. And then you have your top and your bottom stops. All right, so the top and bottom stops don't necessarily go on top and bottom, of course, because of the idea that some zippers aren't going up and down. Some of them are just going sideways. But I'll explain to you the top and bottom stop. The top stop is a teeny little brass piece that you would cut one of these teeth off of here with, or, well, you would cut one of the teeth off. Um, uh, you can use a small pair of nippers or something like that. And then you crimp one of these tiny, tiny little brass pieces on there. And it basically is a little bit different shape than the zipper chain, so it doesn't allow the zipper head to go past it. Now, the top one you put on each side so that the zipper separates, um, you know, when you, when you unzip it. The bottom stop is the exact opposite. It goes across both, train, uh, both of the, 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 the teeth sides and it clamps around on the back and um, it holds that part together. So in making the zipper that we need for our current bag project, we are going to use two of the zipper pulls and we're not gonna use any top stops because I don't need it open on one end, I need it closed on both ends because it's a bag, it's not a jacket or um, something like that. So I need it closed on both ends. So let me find my little baggie of bottom stops that I was supposed to find before the video, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, um, found my little baggie of bottom stops, and I grabbed um, the, the portion that we're going to put a zipper on for our overnight bag. All right, now we have to choose a zipper. Again, I'm not going to use either of the nylon tooth ones because I don't like the, or I like the brass tooth uh, look more. <clears throat> so my other choice is, okay, I've got a brown one and a black one here. And basically it's all about your color coordination and what looks best. I'm using a very, very dark leather um, for the accent pieces on this bag. It's, it is brown, even though I'm looking at the camera, it looks kind of black. It is very dark brown. Um, and then my, I've got a brown zipper or I've got a black zipper, both with brass teeth. Um, the brown one is not really the same color. It's a little bit lighter, but here's my main body bag pieces and it looks pretty good with it. So I may take a dare and use the brown because I use a lot more of the black and I'd, I'd like to not run out of it. Um, um, so I really think I can get away with the brown on this one, but sometimes this particular color of brown just really clashes with whatever you're making. So you may want to go safe and use the black one. Um, so yeah, I will take the black one here and throw it down in the pile. Now, let's talk about making a zipper. Um, the first thing you need to do is measure out how much of it you need. 
Okay, so obviously the zipper needs to start at one point and end at the other where we've done our cutouts. All right, um, but rule of thumb when I'm cutting anything is if it's something like this, I would rather cut four inches too many than even a quarter of an inch too less. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and extend this zipper past my piece of leather by a couple of inches on each side just to be very, very safe. And I'm going to go ahead and cut my zipper. Um, again, this thing has brass teeth, all right? Um, it's not going to be easy to cut. You can't just chomp right through it with your scissors. And I wouldn't use my good scissors to do it. Um, this is a pair of scissors I bought at Tandy a few years ago. Excuse me. I think they're like six bucks. They're pretty dang cheap. And um, I mean, this is my zipper cutting pair of scissors. That way, if I accidentally nick a blade or something like that, I don't care. It wasn't my $40 CS Osborne scissors. So I'm going to cut all the way up to the zipper chain itself. And then I'm just going to slowly work my way through that zipper chain, making sure that I'm not actually trying to cut through a piece of brass and snip it off. All right, so to build this zipper, we need to, again, I'm going to have two zipper heads facing each other that meet in the middle, okay? So the first thing you have to do to put a zipper together is pull it apart. Now I have two halves of a zipper. Do not worry, there's not, a, um, there's not like a top side and a bottom side of this type of zipper. Um, the nylon ones there is, but it's very easy, easy to identify. Uh, but the brass one, I have looked and looked, and it seems that the top and bottom are completely identical. Um, all right, so to put the, 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 the excuse me, to put the, um, the, the slide on the zipper, the first thing you want to do is put it about, a f about the whole head lengths on the, to the end of your zipper there. This is another reason that we cut it longer than our project needs. Okay, so you put it through on one side, that was easy. The other side is going to be the difficult part. So you run the other side in there and you just kind of wiggle them around. You can almost feel them click together when they're ready, if they're actually ready. And then the hard part is trying to hold it while zipping it. Dang it. Now I bet since we're on camera, this is going to take me forever. I can normally do this in just a matter of seconds. All right, I think we got it. There we go. All right, so the head is now on the zipper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zip it all the way to the other end so that I can see which side is sticking up more than the other side. And that will help me get the other one on because these need to be as evenly spaced as possible. If I put the other one on and there's a giant and they're not the, 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 the tracks aren't evenly spaced, then when I zip them both up, I'll have a giant bubble like that on one side. And I don't want the big bubble. I want this to look like a nice, smooth, professionally made zipper. All right. Should have counted how many times I'm going to say zipper in this video. So next thing we do is we put the other one on the long side first and then work the short side in just like we did on the other side or the other end. Sorry, confusing terminology. And we're going to do the same thing and try to pull that sucker closed. There we go. All right, so let's see how lucky we got on the first try. There have been many times I've taken this apart and put it back together six times. And we are 100% in the right spot. See, when they're zipped together, there's no big bubble on one side versus the other. There is a bubble completely around it, but um, not like necessarily bigger on one side than the other. And that is exactly what we want. Okay? So... Um, I can't believe I got that lucky uh, doing an actual video on it. So I totally figured I'd have to pause that video for a little while. <laughs> All right. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to put the bottom stops on my zipper. All right. And I have not figured out a simple scientific method of doing this. So I'm just going to show you what I do and what it's supposed to do. Um, and then I will let you figure out an awesome way to do it. And feel free to put it in the comments and help me out. So the bottom stop, um, again, it holds the zipper together on both sides. It doesn't allow it to separate like the top stops do. Get one of these out of the bag here. I need two for this application. One for each end. 
All right, so I've got my zipper underneath my, um, my leather piece here, and I'm going to take my marker, and I'm just going to blacken a tooth on the zipper right at the end of the leather. And then I'll do the same thing on the other end. All right. Now, I've got to go grab something right quick and know exactly where it is. This is my little rubber pad that you've seen me use in, in videos where I do hand stitching and stuff. I use it to uh, apply the bottoms of these zippers as well. Um, I need this pair of pliers. It's just a small pair of needle nose uh, pliers. And I'm going to use this little ball peen hammer. And I'm sure people that have done a lot of zippers are like, why in the world is he using these tools? Again, for the bottom stops, I have not figured out the, the easiest uh, way to do this, but I figured out a way that works for me. So that's what I'm going to do, and I'm, that's what I'm going to show you. All right, so the little bottom stop has four tiny little prongs. I know it's so hard for my camera to focus. I have such a nice camera sitting over there, and I just haven't stopped to use it. Anyway, um, it has four little prongs, and um, then the, the top of it looks pretty familiar. It's just a big brass rectangle that fits over the zipper. Now, I want to put this where the prongs straddle the zipper teeth. I don't want them trying to go through the zipper teeth. I want them to straddle the zipper teeth. I'm going to kind of push it in. I'm using the rubber pad so I have something to push it in through. And then I'm going to use my little hammer and get it nice and nice and tight there at the bottom. All right. When I turn that over, I can see those four teeth sticking through the uh, sticking through the zipper. So I am going to take these pliers here, and I'm going to squeeze those teeth toward each other slightly, and um, get it started to uh, to fold over there. And then I will just individually push those teeth down using either the pliers or the hammer. If using the hammer, please be careful not to damage your zipper teeth because then your zipper won't close. And we all know how dangerous an open zipper can be. All right. Almost got that. All right, so one side of the stop is on. When I pull the zipper down, it will not come off anymore. Perfect, especially since we got it in the right spot. Now I gotta come over here and do the exact other side, but first I'm gonna remeasure because I'm a nervous person and I don't like screwing up. So I'm gonna remeasure it. I'm going to take my leather and put it back over it. Make sure that that stop is right at the very tip of the leather and make sure my black mark is still right there at the other end of the leather. Okay? And it is. So we're good. And my other bottom stop here. Push it through. Hammer it down, turn it over, make sure it's, it's straddling the, uh, the teeth and not trying to go on the outsides of the teeth. And again, I will just crimp it down, push those uh, little pieces toward each other, and then push them down. All right, good and secure on both ends. The zipper will go nowhere, and that's great. So now I have probably the nicest zipper I've ever done, so there we go, because it's exactly the right length. It's exactly the right everything. The stops went on first time. The zipper went on first time. I'll tell you what, I'm getting good. One of these days, I might be good at this. Who knows? So when I put my, 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 
I'm sorry. When I put my zipper uh, under the leather again, it is going to be right at the point that the, um, the stops are right there at the edges. So I'm going to stop this video right now because I want you to have a video of just the zipper portion to reference so you're not having to go through videos and figure out where in the world the zipper stuff is. So uh, again, I'm Aaron Heiser, Maker's Leather Supply. Thank you very much for watching uh, part four of our bag making series, Installing the Zipper. Well, building the zipper. We'll install it next.